Welcome to the official Finnovate podcast with Greg Palmer. In 2007, Finnovate set out to create a dynamic fintech showcase featuring live seven-minute demos. For more than a decade, our global event series has brought together tens of thousands of people from across the fintech spectrum to see cutting-edge technologies. Now you can find out what goes on behind the scenes as key influencers and innovators share the stories that they don't get to tell you from stage. Here's a glimpse of what we have in store for this episode. For example, our approach at Zogo is, you know, you get this app and you start learning and then earning money from the bank. And that kind of loyalty is formed slowly. And the relationship is built with each module being learned on Zogo and each interaction the kid have with, with the bank. And now your host, Greg Palmer. Thanks for tuning in to the Finnovate Podcast. This is Greg Palmer. This week, we have two episodes for you, which are going to focus on young people in banking from two different angles. Both of the companies you'll hear from this week are best of show winners from Finnovate Fall. I know that the idea of engaging with younger customers is something that can be very challenging for financial institutions of all sizes. Obviously, a lot of fintech companies are focused on that challenge as well. And so we're going to dive into it a little bit. And what better place to start than by focusing on and actually talking with a young person? I know, novel concept. So before we get too far, let's just jump right into the interview with Balloon Lee from Zogo Finance. Joining me today on the podcast, we have Balloon Lee, the founder of Zogo Finance, one of our best of show winning companies at Finnovate Fall 2019 in New York just a little bit ago. And Balloon is actually the youngest person to win a best of show at Finnovate so far. He is currently a student at Duke University, and we're going to talk with him a little bit about what that's like. But before we get too far, can you give us just a quick intro into what Zogo is all about? Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for inviting me on this show. Uh, really excited to share about Zogo and what we're working on um, you know, in this teenage finance space. So, so Zogo is a reward-based financial literacy app uh, that pays teenagers to learn. Uh, it comes with 300 uh, bite-sized educational modules that covers all the national standards for financial literacy. And each of the modules start with five Twitter style snippets and followed by a five um, kind of questions review. And as the kids are going through the app and going, you know, learning on the app, they will be earning points. And using the points, they can redeem for gift cards and rewards on the Zogo store. Uh, so it's very engaging and rewarding application for teenagers. And at the same time, they're learning as well. Yeah. And, and one of the things, you know, anybody who's been a part of my coaching calls uh, with presenters before the events knows I typically recommend not to get into the origin story too much. But in this case, I think it's actually something that is really important um, because you actually had an experience where you... Uh, sat through a financial literacy program and realized that it was just not adequate. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah, yeah, I can still remember it till today. It was um, it was in high school, and my parents actually signed me up for for one of these you know financial literacy classes in my high school. It was an after school program, so you know I was like, oh my god, I have to go to this thing <laughs> after school. Um, it was, I was a little annoyed if, even just when they signed me up for it. And when I arrived, there was like 20 kids in the classroom. I was sponsored by a local bank. So there was like a big bank's logo on the screen. And, you know, the banker walked in and started talking. Like there's a presentation in the back. And he's kind of just going through the pre- presentation and, uh, you know, very knowledgeable and very eloquent guy. And, and tried to like ask funny questions like, um, like, guess where, you know, what, what does boy spend more money on? <laughs> Try to be very engaging. But, you know, I was looking around the room and, and all my friends, including myself, we're just like playing on our phone or texting each other, looking at Instagram, Snapchatting, and then, you know, doing all the things that teenagers do and not really paying attention. So I just, I just feel like, you know, there's definitely a better way we could have delivered or the bankers could have delivered that um, education to these teenagers in a more impactful an engaging way. So it's one of those things where you can hear that story and think, oh, these disrespectful teenagers not paying attention to somebody who's trying so hard to teach them a valuable lesson. But I think the other side of it is make the lesson more engaging, right? Make it something that people actually want to listen to. And and this is, I think, a really interesting question. You know, is this more of a miss in how the message is delivered or, or is the message itself flawed in that experience for you? I really think it's how the message is delivered. Because I think at the end of the day, you know, when we talk about financial literacy, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, a lot of contents or a lot of resources available, but 
the way that it's, it's being delivered currently to teenagers is really not the way that teenagers wants to perceive it. You know, I, I would say it's because of the, the channels of delivery. I think that's one of the things that you specifically tackle, right, is the way it's not so much rethinking the information itself, but just getting it to them in a way that is more engaging. You know, I think one of the pieces that we talked about before we actually got on the phone is some of the surveys that you've actually done with some of your co-students at your fellow students, I should say, at Duke, talking about how they relate to their banks and how they think about banking products. Can you talk a little bit about some of the, the key learnings that you've been finding there in this sort of informal, uh, I, I hesitate to even call it research, but it is to some extent the early stages of a research project. Um, just asking them some very basic questions of how they feel about their financial institution, what can the financial institution do to make their experience better. And, and one of the common themes that we found is that loyalty should be rewarded. And, you know, that's one thing we, we, we kept hearing. A lot of these students were like, I'm, you know, I'm with this bank, but I don't really feel anything. I don't feel loyal to them at all because I've never been, I, I, I have never been re rewarded for being a loyal customer. So I don't really feel like I have a relationship with this bank. And if there's you know, another bank trying to entice me to, <laughs> to, go, to go there or reward me to go there, I will go there. It's, you know, it, it, there's no stickiness there with, with our generations and, and the financial institution's choice. So, so that's, I think that's one of the interesting things we found. And there's you know, a bunch of really funny comments from the teenagers. Get a warning before they get punished <laughs> by the financial institution. And, and, and you know, a lot of things. And we made all this research available online as well for, for the financial institution. So they can kind of see what the teenagers are saying about them. Well, and coming back to the idea of giving a reward, I mean, certainly there are a number of banks that offer rewards designed to get students to open accounts or not just students, anybody to open an account. And I think, you know, you mentioned that you are uh, taking advantage of a lot of those offers, opening accounts, claiming that reward, but, but that doesn't seem to keep you loyal. Is it a faction, of, you know, not at the beginning of a relationship, but that kind of continuing of a relationship looking for opportunities for loyalty yeah I, I you know that's a great point I think you know open account opening should be rewarded for sure but it needs to be a continuous process you know it can be just open accounts and then you get money because that's like very short term and it doesn't really create that that relationship however you know if it's a step at a time maybe like uh, for example our approach at Zogo is you know you get this app and you start learning and then earning money from the bank and that kind of loyalty is formed slowly and the relationship is built with each module being learned on Zoga and each interaction the kid have with, with the bank uh, rather than just, you know, go into the branch, open an account, never think about it. And I, I don't think that, way, that builds loyalty very well. Well, at the risk of alienating some of my potential listeners, in my earlier days, I was the person who would grab that $500 check to go open an account at whatever bank and, you know, go wait until the $500 was deposited in, you know, six months or 12 months and then close the account out, grab that money, pocket it and say, okay, thanks. But I think the beauty of the Zogo platform is it keeps you coming back. It keeps you engaged on kind of a low level continuous basis, not only with the learning side of it, but with that reward side of it. So it does develop a, a relationship with a bank in a digital way because, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm guessing that you're probably not going to a bank branch very often. In fact, actually I have a question. That, that's a good question. When's the last time you were physically in a bank branch yourself and, and what were you doing there? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't even remember last time I was, maybe when I opened the business account for Zogo actually. <laughs> sure. So business, not personal. Yeah, I think so. I think that was the last time I was in the branch. Um, yeah. It's just, it just no need for me to do it, uh, you know, in person. So I always just do it online. I think the last time I was in one was to get something notarized, which is not even technically a banking service, but I, that's the closest notary that I was able to find. And, and that's actually fairly common with a lot of the, the people who I talk to as well. Obviously, I'm, a, I'm older than you. I think everybody in fintech is, but I'm actually still considered young by fintech standards. So, uh -huh. it's, uh, But it's true that this question of why go to a branch and how to engage is one that is obviously vexing customers and, and bankers alike. And I think there's a lot in this conversation for bankers to take away. So for people who weren't able to check out your demo in person, the video is available online at finnovate.com slash videos. And you can go in and see their, um, their presentation there. And that bell means that we, we just kind of hit the end of our time. But 
It's a really interesting product. It's a really interesting topic, talking about the way banks are going to have to continue to evolve to engage more young customers. So um, you're doing strong work, Balloon, and thank you very much for joining me on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Greg. One of the things which I think is really important to take away from this conversation is the importance of gathering a diverse set of opinions. As you heard the story there, Bolin's idea for the company came from him actually sitting in a room with kids his own age and realizing that they were not being engaged well. And you almost wonder, you know, was the bank who was trying to talk to them, had they reached out to any young people? Had they actually conversed with young people? This is a really important step. And it's something that is very simple, but I don't get the impression that it happens all the time. So a really interesting conversation there for sure. Would encourage you to check out their video to learn more and stay tuned for our upcoming episode this week, where we're going to talk a little bit about the college admissions and student loan debt crisis going on in America, kind of looking at this from a different angle. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, check out Finnovate.com for information on upcoming shows. And don't forget the discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on all future ticket purchases. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us on the Finnovate Podcast this week. Brought to you by the team behind Finnovate and produced in association with Provoke Media. Make sure you tell your friends about the show, leave us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to our show, and check out our upcoming events at finnovate.com.